my name is Mindy Martell. I'm the president of Clothier Design Source, and we help new apparel entrepreneurs develop and manufacture their clothing here in the U.S. And today I have with me Olivia. Um, and Olivia, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your profession? Sure, Mindy. Uh, my name is Olivia Betty. I'm a partner at Neil Gerber and Eisenberg in Chicago. So I'm a, I do IP litigation these days. Um, I help people enforce and defend against intellectual property, which is patents, trademarks, copyrights, trade secret um, issues, whether it's infringement or theft. And before that, I helped um, inventors get patents. So I did that for a couple of years. And before that, I was a patent examiner with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, helping to either grant or deny patents to inventors. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I thought if we could get together and uh, be really beneficial for our audience to learn more about how patents might apply to the apparel world. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of really cool um, inventors and entrepreneurs here who are looking to do something really unique. And it's a question we get asked all the time, you know, if they can patent their product and if it is patentable, what kind of patents and, um, you know, what process they would have to go through and all that. So, um, so today, one of my first questions I wanted to ask you about is, I know I know enough to be dangerous, right? So, <laughs> okay. You're not coming from ground zero. So right, right. So, right. So I know that there's two different kind of patents in general that um, people that are making apparel might go down, like two different routes. Correct. Um, and you can always correct me if I'm wrong here. But um, so there's like a design patent and a utility patent. And I've Correct we've kind of dealt with both of those. Okay. But it'd be really great if you could sort of tell us, you know, from a high level, what the difference is between those two kinds of patents. Sure, absolutely, Mindy. So the utility patent is a patent that an inventor can get, can get for an invention that provides use. It's gotta be functional. It's gotta be useful. There's gotta be some kind of improvement to something that was done before, or it's something completely novel that helps you do something versus a design patent, which is purely ornamental. It cannot be functional. It can't be, uh, it can't serve some kind of a use in any way besides being aesthetically different or pleasing looking to help you identify the source of that good. So you've got the functional versus the aesthetics, um, basically. And there are a lot of differences between the two beyond that. That's the highest level. Which, which one's more expensive, I guess, to apply okay. for? So the utility patent is a lot more expensive okay. than a design patent, but you shouldn't look at it from price, first of all, because usually your invention is going to dictate which one you can get. Um, beyond that, though, there are some, you can maybe have a, a decision that's based on that, but that's way further on. But first, you have to figure out which one it is. But the utility patent is a lot more expensive. It's going to be between twenty-five dollars to $30,000 to get that patent. And it takes about two to three years for an examiner to even get their hands on that patent because of the backlog and that the months and months of time that it takes for the patent examiner to go through the prior art, which is what has been done before. And the design patent, which is could be anywhere between two to five thousand okay. dollars. So much, much less. And those are taking about a year to get through the patent office these days. OK, um, so much less money and um, less time. But now the two of them also have different things that they give you, okay? So both patents give you monopoly. So when you get a patent as an inventor, you don't get a right to make your invention or make it and sell your invention. You're getting a right to keep others from making, using, selling your invention. So basically the US government is giving you a monopoly on this invention. Utility patent, you get 20 years from the date of filing Okay. So your application for your monopoly. For design patent, you get 15 years from the date of grant of okay. your design patent for your monopoly. Okay. And then the utility patent, on top of this huge cost that it takes to get it through the patent office, you have to pay a maintenance fee every year, and it's usually several hundred dollars. Okay. In a design patent, there's no maintenance fees. So yeah. there's all these differences um, yeah. between the two patents. That's really great. So again, I do want to dive into examples, but um, questions about protections 
So two, two things that I'm thinking about. So the utility patent, as you said, it's, it's, it, it costs more money. It takes more time to get it done. It's more work. Um, but if I were a apparel brand owner and I was able to do a utility patent, um, my company most likely is going to be worth a lot more money in the end if I have a utility patent, if I'm able to get a utility patent versus a design patent. Um, depends. I, it does depend, but if it's, if it's more of an invention type garment, yes. um, I would, I would think it'd be worth more money. I guess, you know, that's a good, good point. You said depends. I'd like to know more about that, but I would think it'd be worth more money as a brand because now I have a monopoly on that type of invention that I'm making. Well, you get the monopoly in the design patent too. So let's dive right. into some examples because I think that will help okay. everyone who's watching um, kind of distinguish between the two. It's not really just one costs more and one costs less. It gives you more of a, a leg up in the industry. Sure. It's more what it is. So some examples of a utility patent in your industry may be a puffy jacket that folds into a bag. Or right now, I think there's a hoodie now that has a beer bottle that you can put in the front of your pocket. The DVF wrap dress, that's functional. That's a utility patent. Um, there's one, and I have, I pulled it to show you, is a the convertible bra. So there was an inventor in 2002 who filed this application on a convertible bra, um, where nowadays, it's 2019, we just think, of course you can have a convertible bra. You can do a strapless, one shoulder, you know, racer back, whatever it is. But I guess in 2002, there was no patent on this bra, and it wasn't really widely available okay um, so the inventor it took uh, two years I guess to get it through the patent office and what this is so this is the front of a utility patent you've got the inventor's name you've got the number which nowadays I think we're in the ten the ten thousands and this one's in uh, ten millions and this is six million okay but you have the summary of it you've got figures and then you have in the back what are called patent claims and in this there are nine claims and they're all written. It's all text. Mm -hmm. And what's tough um, about the utility patent, maybe why it costs so much as being someone who actually drafted these as well, yeah. is it's almost not normal English. Sure. And these, this is the meets and bounds of what you own at the end. And it's almost like a real estate deed. This invention, and even just reading the first three lines of it, an improved brassiere, the type having a garment body, having a pair of cups with body facing surfaces, having free upper edges and a pair of torso bands. So it goes on and on and on. And it's just very verbose, um, sure. which is very different from the design patent. Okay. So it just takes a lot of hours to write and go back and forth to the patent examiner why it costs so much money. Mm -hmm. Does makes that make sense? sense? Yeah. 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 And I think Nike's got patents on the cushioning. Um, and there's just other other just functional features of the clothing that would make it a, a utility. Right. right. So back to back to my thought of so if if I was a brand owner and I owned a utility patent um, and I said I would think that would make my company worth more money. And you said depends. Oh. What, what did you mean? I was just okay. curious about that. It absolutely is good to have IP. Absolutely yeah. great to try to get whatever protection you can, whether it's copyrights, trademarks, sure. or patents on your intellectual property for your brand. And sure. I meant depends between utility and design. Got it. So Lululemon has really, really stepped up their design patent game. So mm -hmm. I think instead of trying to think of, okay, and if they come with some kind of moisture wick absorbing garment, um, they may want to go for utility patent for that. But they have over 55 patents pending and granted on design patents, on their yoga pants, on their bra, on their jackets, on everything that they can imagine, they've um, applied for design patent on. Sure. Yep. And so some examples of that, I mean, I don't know if you have any examples, otherwise I can pull some things off the rack behind me. Oh, sure. Of, let's look. Yeah. I mean, I have some examples, but look at your, let's look sure. at yours. Um, I mean, for instance, this is a, let me grab this, little girl's dress. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, adorable. It, yeah, it's adorable. It's a cute little design. Um, and could, could one patent, like what would be patentable about this dress? And, and I'll just guess here. I would think it would be maybe the print. 
like the print maybe could be protected? Um, the print, I would say, is more of a copyright. A copyright. Okay. Would. Okay. Great. Um, copyright, and we can do that in another segment, but copyright protection protects against a lot of artwork. So artwork. Think, okay. If you think of an Hermes scarf for the Burberry plaid, those are usually copyright in, or maybe trade dress protectable. Okay. Okay, good. That's good to know. I always thought that was part of what a design patent was. Um, great. Um, you know, I, otherwise, it's kind of hard to imagine what might be patentable on this or, you know. Maybe the way that the, the three prints are put together, laid out like that. Right, right. Maybe. Um, but I would think copyright is a better way to protect that piece of garment. Okay, that makes sense. Um, trade dress. I think here, so here we have, this is kind of hard to see, but this, this is a, a, a scrub pant. So, okay. um, but something that's a lot more comfortable, lightweight, made, made out of fabric, speaking of Lululemon, made out of like similar fabric to Lululemon. Um, it has, it has a lot of features in it, like certain, you know, different types of pocketing for the things that maybe nurses need to carry. Um, you know, but beyond that, you know, those are the only features of it. It's, it's just more comfortable mm -hmm. and it ha it has special pockets that special. are that are for like maybe carrying different instruments or because they always have to have a pens and um you know maybe some different instruments that they carry okay so if the pockets are specially made to function as like a stethoscope scary carrier or the clipboard or some kind of special doctor you um you um Equipment, apparatus, <laughs> equipment. Sure. Perhaps it could have a utility patent, and even it could have a design patent. It just depends on how we're looking at that sure. and how you claim it. Okay. Okay. So it's possible. It's possible. Possible. Okay. Um, so I was thinking about Lululemon earlier, and we were saying that the yoga pant and the bra, that all the different designs have a design patent. I haven't seen it yet because design patents are actually very hard to search for because they're all pictures. There's no text oh. usually. Okay. Um, but I would imagine the new running, their new pants with the pocket, the phone pocket, mm -hmm. would probably have a design patent on it because sure. of the way they've made it look so that they could claim that look versus if you're saying, I would like to try to patent a running pant or yoga pant with a pocket, you're not going to get a utility patent on that because it's too obvious. Sure. Um, sure. And here's the, here's the example I actually pulled of a design patent. This Perfect. is Valentino Rockstud heel. So this one, from the front, it looks very similar to the utility patent. It's got a D in front of its number, so it doesn't make a design. But then once you go in there, there's no text. This one's called a shoe heel. That's it. That's all you see. It doesn't say rock stud. It doesn't say spikes. And it's just page after page of drawings. And this doesn't even show the heel. It just has the dash line. So it's a shoe. It can change the upper shoe any way it would like because it's only claiming this heel. So they can take the spiked heel with the little rock studs coming at you into the sides, going on the sides, on any kind of upper shoe and have protection. Got it. You see in the back, there's no claims at all. It's just page after, after pages of drawings. Okay. So for this, we were saying, you know, anywhere between two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000, because the patent attorney is going to hire um, a special patent design firm, and for both, even the utility patent too. There are companies out there that just help you create the pictures. They know what the patent office's um, rules are as far as what they need to see, how they need to depict it, whether it's the dash lines or solid lines, um, and what views they need. And so this is just pictures. Sure. Um, Great. So that's Great the example. difference between that. Yeah. Um, wow. And some other examples of design um, Patents besides the Lulu Limit, the, the Crocs, the shoes. Yeah. As a design patent. Um, okay. So, so then this is the question that all of our clients ask us, right? Okay. So let's say, you know, um, I had that, what, what did you call that heel? A rock stud heel? Rock stud heel, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, if another brand wants to do a similar heel, the question out there always is what how much do i have to change it for it not to be protected right mm -hmm. um 
And it's funny because in, in my world where we're developing product, um, that's a conversation we have all the time where it's like, well, we can't just, you know, you want to copy that brand. We can't just do that. And, you know, it depends on who the company is. But some companies like are, right, well, if you change it 10%, it's fine. Or if you change it 20%, <laughs> right. like there's always these percentages floating around right. in the apparel world. Like you have to change it 20% and it's fine. Right. Um, so I don't know if you can speak to that or if we could just talk maybe in the Rockstead, Rockstead heel as an example, but let's say I wanted to put a different kind of rock <laughs> stud on, on the, on the heel. <laughs> Is that okay? Or, or in, in that design drawing, maybe there were eight of them going up. What if I change it to seven, you know, that kind of thing. So it's hard to give it a percentage difference that you have to change. Honestly, you have to look at some of the case law and they usually don't use percentages, but they might say like substantially different or some, some other hard way of also knowing how to change it. I mean, it's hard to substantiate that or give it a quantity, but I will say if it's six studs and you want to put seven, that's probably not enough to make it different okay. because ordinary observer test where they put them side by side, they have to look different. So okay. it's an ordinary observer test, um, which again, you know, that's kind of different for each person too, but yeah, you can, you need to change it so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Gotcha. I like that language, ordinary observer test. I've never heard that before. That's great. Yeah. I'm going to use that. There are different ones that have gone through litigation and then you can kind of see what the judges, judges have said that needs to be the difference. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot up to the judge's discretion. I mean, it's the language or the jury, yeah. or the jury <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but it's, it's kind of that ordinary observer test. I like that because it's kind of like if you, if you look at it and you can tell or you, or you go, oh, that you clearly copied that. Can't tell. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You clearly copied that. Then that's kind of that ordinary observer test. Or you look at it and go, oh, are you reaching here to say this is a copy? Like, right. Then, yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If you wanted to talk about why, a, you know, the strength of a design patent, one of the examples I was going to give is that, um, yeah. you know, the Apple v. Samsung litigation, that yeah. was a design patent, not a utility patent. That really was the crux of it. And like the cell phones themselves, themselves have thousands of utility patents underlying if, within the mechanics, but it was the design patent of the outside user interface that netted Apple over $500 million damages verdict. Okay. And yeah, so that was like the look of the, it was about the look of the user interface, right? Yes. Interesting. Kind of so interesting. yeah, that's very interesting. So it still can be very powerful is what you're saying. Like Correct. And give you a yeah. lot of protection. So historically, I think people would look at utility patents and say that they were more powerful. But in 2008, there was a big um, lawsuit or a case called Egyptian Goddess that went all the way to the Supreme Court over a design patent with nail files, whether a three-sided one or a four-sided one was close enough to the design patent. And then with the one with you know Apple v. Samsung a couple of years ago, it was over a $500 million verdict. And that was all design patents. And I think that that is maybe what Lululemon is looking at and saying, listen, design patent is just as mighty as a utility patent. They're cheaper and easier to get. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, this has been so helpful, Lydia. Thank <laughs> you. I'm so glad, Mindy. Yeah, thank you so much. This is Oh, great. you're welcome. I love to teach, and, you know, I, I talk a lot and, and go and teach about IP a lot, so this is fun for me. And this is different. This is a new format, but you're yeah. so lovely to speak with.